Russia is building a warplane that fights at 300,000 kilometers per second. Not with missiles or cannons, but with lasers powerful enough to burn through drones in seconds, blind satellites hundreds of kilometers above Earth, and melt the guidance system of a cruise missile before it ever reaches its target. And here's the twist. Some in Moscow whisper that the Su-75 Checkmate, Russia's budget stealth fighter, might one day carry lasers. On first glance, it sounds like comic book tech, a $25 million jet with a death ray. But the physics isn't completely crazy. The Checkmate was built to be cheap, stealthy, and export-friendly. Single engine, internal bays, digital cockpit. Adding a laser, though, is a different challenge. Lasers don't just need space. They need power, hundreds of kilowatts of it. The U.S. is testing 300 kilowatt systems on warships with cooling plants the size of a truck. A single-engine fighter doesn't exactly have room for that. Could it still be done? Possibly. A smaller 50 to 100 kilowatt system could fit as a pod, strong enough to fry drones, blind optics, or disable short-range missiles. It wouldn't turn Checkmate into a flying death ray, but it would give Sukhoi a unique sales pitch, a stealth fighter with a built-in drone shield. And let's be honest, it would look fantastic on a Max Airshow brochure, even if it never made it past prototypes. But the real laser aircraft won't be the Su-75. Mounting a megawatt-class weapon would blow the budget and ruin its purpose as a cheap stealth jet. If Russia builds a true laser platform, it'll look more like the Pak Da, a large subsonic stealth aircraft with the space to carry generators, cooling systems, and heavy optics. Something designed from the ground up for directed energy warfare. And this isn't entirely new. In the 1980s, the Soviets tested the A-60, an IL-76 transport with a laser cannon strapped to its nose. It barely popped balloons, but the idea survived. Today, the project re-emerges as the A-60M2 Sokol Echelon. Meanwhile, Russia already fields the Perisvet ground laser, claimed to blind satellites. The ambition is clear. Move lasers from test beds into combat platforms. Here's why NATO worries. A laser jet doesn't run out of ammo. As long as its engines spin, it can fire again and again. A million-dollar tomahawk neutralized by a few bucks of electricity. Drones erased, satellites blinded, all of it silent, with no missile lock, no contrail, no warning. It's easy to joke about a Russian pilot sipping tea while zapping targets like he's playing asteroids. But if Moscow makes this real, the humor ends fast. This wouldn't be just a new aircraft. It would be a reset, a weapon that flips the script on Western air dominance. So. Could the Checkmate get lasers? Maybe in a gimmick role. But the real laser jet, if it ever takes off, will be bigger, stealthier, and slower, built for one mission, turning the next war in the skies into a war of light. Welcome to Military Power. Today we're breaking down Russia's rumored laser aircraft, how it could fly, why it matters, and whether the future belongs to missiles or to beams of light. Start with power, because a beam is only as real as its watts. A useful airborne defensive laser today sits in the 50 to 300 kilowatt bracket. Below 50 kilowatts, you are mostly harassing sensors. Beyond 300 kilowatts, you start burning through tougher skins and seekers in realistic dwell times. To feed that appetite, an aircraft needs high-output generators on the main turbines, plus a surge buffer battery or supercapacitor packs near the center of gravity so firing does not upset handling. Think of it like nitrous for electricity. Short, brutal bursts that recharge between shots. Next is cooling. A laser is a heater that happens to shoot straight. Every second of beam time dumps waste heat into the airframe. Expect a closed-loop liquid system, heat exchangers buried in the wing roots, and boundary layer tricks that shed heat without glowing like a forge on infrared. If the Americans learned anything from shipboard 150 to 300 kilowatts tests and the old YAL one, it is that cooling is the real weapons bay. Moscow knows it too. Then beam control. No one points a flashlight. A stabilized turret with fast steering mirrors, adaptive optics to correct for shimmering air, and a low observable window does the aiming. A chin mount favors head-on shots. A dorsal turret favors high-altitude lateral engagements. A real-time fire control loop fuses radar, infrared search and track, electronic support measures, and offboard cues. The crew presses consent, the computer picks aim point, dwell time, and shot order at machine speed. 
What is the engagement envelope? In clean, dry air at 9,000 to 12,000 meters, a 200 kilowatt class beam can deliver lethal energy to a drone or a missile seeker in two to four seconds at ranges of a few kilometers. Thicker skins, humid air, haze, and cloud push you closer or demand longer dwell. The aircraft will hunt altitude and air mass like a sniper hunts wind and light. Weapons mix matters. The point is not to replace missiles, it is to change the math. Give the jet a magazine of almost free shots for drones, glide bombs, and seekers. Keep standoff missiles for what the beam cannot finish. A plausible load is KH-101 class cruise missiles internally for deep strikes. Open source ranges run up to 5,500 kilometers, with a conventional warhead around 400 kilograms, and unit costs reported at around $13 million. Add hypersonic options for the sword to the laser's shield. Kinjal around Mach 10 with roughly 2,000 kilometers reach and the approximately 500 kilograms payload, and a future air-launched Zircon derivative in the Mach 8 neighborhood with shorter reach but ugly terminal energy. Now the platform can kill cheap and kill far on the same sortie. Flight profile? Subsonic endurance. A long wing and blended body cruising near Mach 0.8, unrefueled range on the order of 12,000 kilometers as a design target and aerial refueling pushing time on station past 24 hours if the crew and maintenance can stand it. The laser jet wins by being there, quietly, when raids arrive. Crew and cockpit, two humans, one airplane. Up front, a pilot with hands-on throttle and stick. Behind, a mission commander running sensor fusion, electronic attack, and beam shots. Expect a glass cockpit with helmet queuing, wide area displays, and an autonomy layer that triages targets faster than human eyes can scan. Networking ties into GLONASS, Liana radar satellites, a 50-100 airborne early warning, NEBO-M and container over the horizon radars, plus ship radars on distant arcs. In other words, see from everywhere, shoot from here. Now stack that against everyone else. The United States shut down the YAL-1 because boost phase missile kills demanded a flying chemical plant loitering next to the launch site. Tactically absurd. Lesson learned. Go compact, go electric, get closer to the terminal problem. Current U.S. efforts focus on 50 to 100 kilowatt class airborne defensive lasers. Think potted demonstrators for fighter-sized aircraft, 60 to 150 kilowatt shipboard systems for drone and small boat defense, and 50 kilowatt land systems for short-range air defense. The aim is the same, burn optics and seekers cheaply. The United Kingdom's Dragonfire demonstrator has shown precise beam pointing in the 50 kilowatt class, with the stated goal of low cost per shot against drones and missiles. It is a technology path rather than an operational jet, but the lesson is identical. Precision, stabilization, and thermal management are the fight. China? Public work points to strong shipboard lasers and a blunt message. The H-20 stealth bomber aims for subsonic endurance and heavy internal volume a logical future host for directed energy once power density improves. Beijing will not say it out loud, but a big stealth plane with a big electrical bus is the right airframe for lasers. Where does the Su-75 checkmate fit? As a laser carrier, only in a limited role. A 50 to 100 kilowatt pod could plausibly fry drones and blind optics, a drone shield that looks great on a brochure and occasionally saves a sortie. But a megawatt class weapon in a single engine budget fighter? That is a physics and logistics prank. The real laser jet, if Russia fields one, will look closer to a flying wing. Slow, stealthy, and roomy. Costs? Ballpark it. A purpose-built laser stealth aircraft with large generators, cooling, and optics will not be cheap. If a Pak Da analog sits around $160 million per copy in optimistic chatter, adding directed energy guts could push a first tranche into the $200 million to $300 million neighborhood sounds expensive, until you compare it to a $700 million plus B-2 Spirit or a projected $750 million B-21 Raider. Strategy is math. If each shot costs a few dollars of fuel and electrons and erases a $1 million cruise missile, you let accountants fight your war for you. Humor check. Yes, the mental picture is a pilot sipping tea and playing asteroids. Reality check. It is a machine that turns guidance sections into ash, one bright dot at a time.
plug the laser jet into Russia's doctrine and the puzzle locks. On day one, Nebo M and Container paint the long picture. Voronezh over the horizon radars watch farther still. A 50-A 100 orbit as airborne quarterbacks. Surface forces raise S-400 umbrellas to 400 kilometers, with S-500 extending anti-ballistic reach towards 600 kilometers. Submarines and corvettes push caliber salvos from 1,500 to 2,500 kilometers. Overhead, Liana satellites and reconnaissance birds feed coordinates. Into that web flies the laser platform, a silent bouncer whose job is to erase the cheapest, most numerous threats and carve holes for standoff strikes. A raid appears, drones, decoys, and cruise missiles. The laser jet climbs to 10,000 to 12,000 meters, finds dry air, and starts working. Drones die first, in seconds, at a few kilometers. Then seekers and optics on incoming missiles, forcing misses or soft kills. Anything that survives meets KH-101 from beyond 2,000 kilometers, or a Kinjal sprint from approximately 2,000 kilometers away at roughly Mach 10. The aircraft conserves its expensive missiles and spends electrons instead. That is the point. Tip the cost curve. How does that compare? United States, the B-21 Raider is the world's most serious stealth production bomber effort, with a design for high survivability, modular payloads, and deep networking. DoD laser efforts trend pragmatic. 50 to 100 kilowatts airborne demos for self-defense, 60 to 150 kilowatts ship lasers for drones and small missiles, and Army 50 kilowatts class short-range air defense. The U.S. bet is quantity of sensors and shooters, tight networking, and a bomber that does not need a laser to get in and out. If America mounts serious lasers on aircraft, they will likely start as defensive pods on tankers and strategic ISR before migrating to large stealth platforms. United Kingdom, Dragonfire pushes precision and stabilization. The UK template is layered defense around carriers and critical sites, then selective export. A British laser jet is not a near-term path. A British laser node guarding a carrier group is. China. The H-20 aims at a PAKDA-style profile. Subsonic endurance, internal volume, stealth. China's ship lasers and land systems suggest a fast follow play. Operationalize directed energy in the fleet and on the ground first, then scale airborne once power density and cooling hit the marks. If anyone can brute force the manufacturing side of thermal management, it is China. NATO as a whole, layered air and missile defense, dense electronic warfare, and saturation of decoys to soak up enemy shots. The Alliance answer to a laser jet is weather, clutter, and numbers. More decoys, more deception, more composite raids that force the beam to divide attention and overheat. Countermeasures include spinning projectiles, ablative coatings, and seeker hardening. In other words, make every kill take longer than the jet can afford. Vulnerabilities? Lasers hate water in the air. Fog, cloud decks, rain, and dust all chew range. Turbulence distorts the beam. Thermal management limits rate of fire. A savvy opponent drives raids through bad air, mixes ballistic arcs and pop-up profiles, and hides high-value shots among trash. The laser jet counters by climbing for clean air, choosing geometry, and letting missiles handle what physics will not. Costs and warheads bring us back to strategy. If a $200 million to $300 million aircraft protects a corridor so $1 million missiles die to Euro-priced electricity, it pays for itself quickly. A KH-101 brings approximately 400 kilograms of conventional explosives to approximately 5,500 kilometers. Kinjal brings approximately 500 kilograms at approximately Mach 10 to approximately 2,000 kilometers. A future Tsurkan air-launched variant would trade payload for approximately Mach 8 terminal energy. Pair that with a laser burning seekers at a few kilometers, and you have a layered kill chain in one airframe. Bottom line, the US leads in stealth production and networking with B-21. The UK leads in exquisite pointing with Dragonfire. China leads in scaling industry. Russia is chasing a cost exchange hack a stealth hauler that shoots light for pennies and missiles for effect. If Moscow makes the power and cooling work in the air, the next big shift in air combat may sound less like thunder and more like a quiet hum. Hit like, smash subscribe, and stay locked in, because when the next war in the skies begins, it may not be with missiles or bombs. It may be with beams of light.
Thanks for watching Military Power and see you in the next videos.